Recently, I've gotten into macro photography, which has led me to do a lot more focused bracketing in the field. And the other day, I tried to upload 23 images to focus stack in Photoshop and my Mac just slowed down completely. And it was like I burnt through the internal storage on the Mac and I just had to abandon the whole thing. I'm sure there's some sort of a fix for this, but the few times I've used Photoshop in the past to do focus stacking, it has gone really slow. Then I remembered that somebody recently had recommended Helicon Focus to me. So I reached out to them and they were kind enough to send me a copy to try out. So in this video, I'll take you through the process of using Helicon Focus to focus stack my images and show how quick the workflow is. Now, once you've installed Helicon Focus, then if you do use Lightroom, you can right click on an image or several images and go down to export. And you'll see up here, you can see Helicon Focus DNG or Helicon Focus TIFF. Um, I've tried both. I prefer TIFF because it goes a lot faster. But if you don't use Lightroom, you can also just drag your photos directly into Helicon Focus. Now, first up, I'll show you just my workflow in Lightroom. And I've selected here, uh, it's 52 images of just a small mushroom that I photographed in forest. And first thing I would do, I would go to the beginning of the sequence and see if I actually need those beginning files. It might mean that I don't have focus at all. I tend to start and stop my focus bracketing manually. So sometimes that means that I get focus a little bit in front of whatever I'm photographing first, and then I just kind of eyeball it to see when it's going all the way through, and I stop it. So sometimes I get a few extra images. Here, it's, it's not really in focus on the first frame. I think on the second, I'm getting a little bit sharpness. So I think I'll just delete the first one. Delete, I'll have a look at the end. Uh, and here I can kind of see that the bottom of this, um, the branch that it's uh, sitting on here is sharp, not the top, but that's probably more in front. So if I go backwards, that's becoming sharp there. And if I go all the way back to the front, I got sharpness at the front. And this is handheld, so you can kind of see that they're a little bit all over the place, but that should be taken care of. That's, it's so easy these days, it's great. I select that first image and I go develop and I make some just light adjustments. I adjust the white balance, uh, white point, black point, just a couple of small things like that. And this would also be the stage that you might send your uh, images to Pure Raw or whatever you use for denoising or if you use Lightroom for denoising, you might want to do that first. But I've been using base level ISO, I'm at ISO 200 here, so I'm not going to use a denoising software on that. Press G to get back out, hold shift in and select the last one. And then here on the right side, I can just do sync settings and I'll just synchronize everything because I haven't done anything else. Synchronize, just wait for all these settings to be applied to all the photos. Then I will right click anywhere, they're all selected. Go down to export and choose Helicon Focus TIFF. All these images will then be imported into Helicon. So here you can see they're just popping up here on the right side. And this is so much faster than what I've experienced in Photoshop. And I have a fairly new Mac. Once they're all in, you kind of do the same thing. You just select the first one, hold shift down, select the last one. So you got them all selected. And they do recommend that they're all in order, that the focus goes from one side to the other side, either the beginning to the end or the end to the beginning. As you see down here, there are three different methods of uh, kind of rendering or like combining them here. I'll provide a link to the website where you can go to see which one they recommend for what type of image. Um, as you can see here, basically a complex, complex shapes. They got an image of a dragonfly here. They got two pluses on method C, method B, not so good, a minus, method A, one plus. Images with a glare, basically they recommend method B. And I've actually seen that because in one that I did previously, I had a couple of water droplets on and in method C it kind of started glaring really weirdly. So method B for that. So long stacks, more than hundred images, they seem to recommend method C. My default has been method B. Um, and then if I don't like what I get, I will move on from there. I will try something else. I noticed here another example that method B kind of messed with the background and I found method A to work a lot better. A little bit of experimentation and just checking the website for what they say. And then we can go to render and it just races through them. It's quite interesting to actually just see this, how fast it goes.
and that's it done. I mean, that's 20 seconds or something like that. So much faster than it's done 50 odd images. Incredibly fast. Now, if there is something you're not happy with, you can go into retouching. There's some brush tools and various stuff there that you can do, some cloning stuff. And again, on the same uh, web page that it says which method you should use to render, underneath that, they also explain a little bit more on how you can smooth out edges or use a brush tool to clean up anything you're not sure if you like or not. I'll go saving and save. I'm just gonna save it back into the same folder as a TIFF. That looks like it. There's a video coming out next week where I do another autumn morning walk with the old five and the 12 to 45 millimeter. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.